go. So here's, this is the negative slew finished wire. And I put three zip ties there and those three kind of crucial spots that just, they make it look cleaner. You know, I could go down here and go crazy with the zip ties, but I don't usually do that. Um, this is fine, this is good enough for me. For a power connector, I use 18 gauge. Once again, I don't have all the optimum colors, whatever. So it's gonna be positive, ground, negative. but I'm gonna strip it like it was 26, so I use a small gauge stripper. Because the, the pads on this power bus are small. side and then I use 18 gauge on the side that's going to connect to the Molex. So I just 15, 18. Yeah, 18. It actually says it on my wire stripper. connectors. I use this female connector with these male I do it. I strip the wire. There's two things to crimp here. Okay. One of them is going to crimp around the raw wire. The bottom one is going to crimp around the insulation. <coughs> I don't know. This works for me. Okay. So I don't know if I'm doing it wrong actually because nobody told me how to do this. But then I use this wire stripper because works for me it's the perfect size perfect width it's flat then I strip I, I, I crimp one side and I hope this is focusing I can barely tell the camera's focused on it so I, I, I crimp one side down around that raw wire and then I crimp the other side down on top of it just fold it over on top of it squeeze it as hard as I can and then I do the bottom so one side basically flatten it then the next side Oops. okay tell you the real trick to this right now. So keep your ears peeled for the golden nugget. Or, I don't know, maybe it's just an antidote because if you just do this and you crimp them and you put them in this thing and you try to use it, plug it in, plug it out, 
you can eventually, especially just like this, pulling on these wires, it's gonna come out. You're gonna pull the wire right out of this shit. Doesn't matter how hard you crimped it. Um, what you gotta do is you gotta solder. So there's like an empty little trough left over with these wings, and these wings are what these little wings are what is gonna hold it in once it goes in. And this, this second. So where it is crimped onto the raw wire, I solder it. Okay, I, uh, I usually wire the power connector in the middle of the rail for whatever, better distribution or whatever. And then um, I use zip ties to hold it down. So here's the negative. Wire for the um, ground is close to the negative rail. And since, since this is 18 gauge, it's easy to it's easy to cook the wire and melt the melt the insulation and then have the parts that you cut off stick out and it's just messy. So it clean looking I usually do the uh, ground on the other side or on a nearby um, pad on the next one over
people ask me some questions about the building. Um, one person asked how I learned uh, how to do all this stuff or whatever. Um, and I just want to say that I never built a damn thing until after I turned 30 years of age. For whatever reason, I didn't have the patience, you know? And I feel like it has enabled me a number of freedoms. Yeah, once I turned 30, I just started getting crafty. I just started wanting to learn how to fix things around the house and how to just create things out of nothing. I just kind of my trip. So yeah, you can do it too. And it's, a, it's even easier now than it was when I first got into it. Now there's a lot of kits. There's a lot of Eurorack kits. There's a lot of synthesizer kits. And a lot of them have like step-by-step -step instructions. So that's what I recommend. Buy a low budget kit, you know, to build up your confidence first. And once you've built one or two of those and you've read the instructions, then you're gonna learn a lot from that experience and then you might, you know, you might end up eventually building something like a surge, you know, that, that doesn't come with step-by-step uh, -step instructions. And so to talk about those freedoms, um, I never feel like I'm stuck for an audio cable of any kind. I never go to the store to buy a cable or feel like, oh, I can't do something because I don't have that $30 or whatever it would take to get a cable. Um, I make my own damn cables from scratch. You know, all audio, RCA, quarter inch, uh, XLR, eighth inch, anything, banana cables, all of it. I make it all from scratch for myself. If I need a specific cable that just doesn't exist or that, you know, it would be a weird one, a weird adapter cable, I make that from scratch. Um, when I get a new piece of gear, or actually an old piece of gear, real studio gear, a lot of times it doesn't even have jacks. Like, uh, them old compressors I got, they have just barrier strips on the back. So yeah, like my pops wasn't the types to build things, and so I didn't grow up building things, but now, after I hit 30, I wanna build everything. I built my own studio desk, I just watched YouTube videos on uh, building furniture, on building studio desks, and then I got into watching the ones of um, building furniture with pallets. I don't know how I did it, but I built up my studio desk. And uh, now that's my thing. That's like, I don't have a TV, but when I want to be lazy and watch something, I watch how to build thing, how to build videos on, on YouTube, how to build everything. My favorite YouTube channel is Diresta, by far. Jimmy Diresta. Every time I think I've seen every one of them, another one pops up. That guy just builds all kinds of random stuff.